Hey guys, Jake from 8020 Media here. One problem that just about every car owner has experienced is issues with getting their car started. This video we're going to talk about why your car might not be starting or why it might be taking a long time to start. We're gonna go ahead and walk through what the common causes of no starts and hard starts are, as well as provide you with some diagnostic tips so that you can go ahead and try to pinpoint what the exact issue is with your car not starting properly. To understand why your car might not be starting properly, it's important to understand how your car actually starts. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a high level walkthrough of what takes place when you actually turn the key and try to start your car. So first, when you get in your car and you turn your ignition system to on, electrical current flows from the battery through the starter switch to the solenoid that sits on the starter motor. Now, once you go and turn the key all the way over to try to crank the engine, the starter solenoid releases that electrical current to the starter motor, and then the starter motor starts to turn. And what happens is the starter motor is connected to the flywheel, and so as the flywheel starts to spin, the engine starts to turn and your cylinders start to open up. So the intake valves will open up and then air will enter them, which starts to create vacuum. And then once you have air in the combustion chamber, now we need fuel in there and we need spark. So when we take that whole process, there's really five different key things that we can break it down into. The first one's the battery. The second one's your starter switch. The third one is the starter motor and the solenoid. And then the fourth one is fuel. And then the fifth is spark, which is mostly related to the spark plugs, creating the spark to ignite the fuel. So now we can take each of these five components and use them to diagnose what might be wrong with our car when it's starting. The easiest place to start with is does it crank or not? If your car is cranking, that means you have battery power, the starter motor works, and there's nothing wrong with the ignition switch. That means that your problem either lies within the spark part of the equation or fueling, or it could be a number of smaller sensors that we'll talk about later. Now, if your car isn't cranking, that means that we don't need fuel and we don't need spark. So that means your problem is either with the battery, the starter motor, or the ignition switch. So let's go ahead and jump into diagnosing and troubleshooting a no crank situation where your car does not crank at all when you turn the key. The first place to start is with the battery. It requires a lot of voltage to actually get a car to be started. And so if your battery is weak or not fully charged, that can cause the starter motor to not even try to turn over at all. Another thing could be the cables on the battery. The cables are prone to becoming corroded or getting some electrical buildup around them, which can cause them to not effectively pass the electrical current from the battery to all of the other electrical components. Checking the battery wires to make sure they're clean and tightly secured is a great first place to start, as well as testing whether your battery actually has enough voltage and holds enough voltage to be able to start the motor. If you leave your battery dead for a long period of time, it can lose its ability to hold the charge to where whenever you charge the battery up, the battery will just drain itself and not actually hold the voltage properly. Another thing that you might commonly experience when your car's not starting at all is a really loud and continuous clicking noise coming from the engine whenever you turn the key and try to start it. That is your starter motor telling you that your battery is not providing enough voltage to the starter for the starter to try to turn over. So if you have a clicking noise, the issue is almost always with your battery. Now, if you don't have any issues with your battery, if it's holding a charge properly, it's fully charged up, the battery cables are all good, then the next thing to look into is the starter motor. 
Now, the starter motor has the solenoid with it. The solenoid holds the electrical current from the battery and then releases it to the starter when you actually fully turn the key. On the majority of starter motors, the solenoid and the motor itself are all connected into one unit. And so if you have to replace either the motor or the solenoid, you have to replace the whole thing, which includes both of them. Whenever you turn your ignition on, the starter motor typically makes a whirring or humming noise. So you can listen to that to try to tell if you can hear the starter motor engaging at all or not. Alternatively, you can test the starter solenoid with a multimeter or you can try jump starting your vehicle from the starter motor itself. If you try jumping it from the starter motor and the vehicle doesn't start, that means you have a bad motor. If your multimeter is not reading any current at the solenoid, that means you have a bad solenoid and you'll need to replace the whole unit. Now, if you've tested your starter, you've checked your battery, and those don't solve the issue, then the problem could likely be with your ignition switch. The ignition switch essentially acts as a circuit breaker between the current going from the battery to the starter solenoid. When the ignition key is turned on, the current will flow through and reach all the way to the solenoid, but when the ignition key is turned off, the ignition switch stops that electrical current so that it doesn't flow down to the starter motor. So, your issue could be that the ignition switch isn't working properly and therefore isn't sending the current all the way down to the starter solenoid. The easiest way to check this is to use a circuit tester and to access the wiring on the ignition switch to check for any voltage passing through it. Now, if you can't find any issues with your ignition switch either, there are a couple other things. Most importantly, a bad crankshaft or camshaft position sensor could be something that causes a no crank condition as well. Now, if your engine is cranking but not starting, it's a completely different set of potential causes. Let's go ahead and jump into those here. Like we mentioned, if you're getting a crank, then you're all good from an electrical standpoint with respect to the battery, the ignition switch, and the starter motor and solenoid. And so that means our problem is either with fueling or with the ignition system, like the spark plugs and ignition coils. The first thing here is going to be checking your spark plugs, your ignition coils, your spark plug wires, or your distributor, depending on what type of ignition system you have on your car. I would say the majority of the time, these are going to be the things that are causing issues with your car cranking and not starting or taking a really long time to start. If you have issues with the spark plugs or ignition coils, you might also notice engine hesitation while you're accelerating, a rough idle, as well as a number of other performance related issues that make it feel like your engine's just not running quite right. The second part of the equation here is fueling. If the engine's not getting as much fuel as it needs, then the engine isn't able to create any combustion to actually start. The two things that I'd recommend looking into in your fueling system is the fuel pump as well as the fuel filter. If your fuel pump's weak, it might not be able to supply enough fuel. If the filter's clogged, that will also impact the amount of fuel that's being sent to the engine. And then a third thing, depending on whether you have a port injected or direct injected car, is the fuel injectors. The fuel injectors can become clogged up or they can leak, which can cause issues with the car starting as well. Now, there are a couple things that can cause your car to crank and not start that aren't spark or fuel related. A couple common things are the camshaft or crankshaft position sensor. On some cars, it won't crank at all if you have a bad sensor. On some cars, it'll still crank, it'll just never start. The crankshaft and camshaft position sensor are two very common sensors to fail that can cause these issues. Additionally, you could have a weak starter motor to where it tries to crank the engine but just doesn't have enough power to get it to fully turn over. The mass airflow sensor could be bad or you could have a dirty throttle body. If you don't have any issues with your spark plugs or ignition coils or fueling related things, look into those four different things and the problem likely lies within one of those. A common question is about the alternator and whether a bad alternator can cause a car to not start. Typically, the alternator won't result in the car not starting so long as your battery is fully charged and has proper voltage. One of the ways to tell if you have a bad alternator is to jump start your car and then once your car is started, take the jumper cables off of it. And if your car dies soon after that, then you have an issue with the alternator. The alternator's job is to recharge the battery and provide electrical current once the engine is started. It typically doesn't have anything to do 
with the battery or electrical current before the engine gets started, which is why you'll be able to start a car with a bad alternator. The engine just won't continue to run because the alternator is not able to fully charge the battery. And so the battery will drain and the engine will shut off. As a general first diagnostic step, when you're running into issues, whether it's a no crank or you have a crank but no start, I'd recommend looking into your fuses and relays. A lot of these electrical components like the ignition switch, the starter motor, your ignition system, all have fuses and relays that help distribute electrical current to them. And a bad fuse could be a really simple thing to fix that's causing an issue with one of these components and causing your vehicle to not start. Always check your fuses before you go buying parts to replace because the last thing you want is for it to turn out to be a 50 cent fuse after you just bought a two or three hundred dollar starter motor all right guys well that covers it for our video on starting related issues if you have any questions go ahead and post them in the comments and i'll do my best to give you some technical guidance if you appreciate this video please click the like button subscribe to our channel and stay tuned for future content